Now for all of these antennas, making your own can be based on many, many guides out there. Some of them are really old. I gave you an example 20 years ago, the first antennas. But as the physics doesn't change much over time, or not at all, one could argue, um, the guides are still valid. And you find some of the best guides in the ham radio world. Uh, look up what you can find, look what contacts you might be able to make in your country to ham radio, amateur radio people who have a long, long tradition of building their own antennas. And some of these you can just scale to the wavelengths, to the frequencies that you might be needing. Ham radio, of course, uses different ones than Wi-Fi, especially with the arrival of ever higher frequencies in uh, Wi-Fi. But the principles of antenna building are exactly the same, just in different scales. So many, many guides out there. Uh, keep an eye on the quality. The Green Book, Wireless Network in Developing World, uh, collects some of the most trusted and proven guides, but there's many, many more out there. And yeah, this is three that we just presented here. These guides, minimum 15, 20 years old, but the antennas would work just the same today. Um, a word on recycling parts. There's all kinds of interesting ways in which you can find elements and combine them with things you build yourself to make interesting antennas. One principle, for example, is to make a little feed and place it in the focal point of some kind of dish. And that dish could be a real parable dish. It could be a thing from an old TV dish. It could be something you find in the kitchen a wok, a grid, wok as pictured here, so a, a grid insert that you use for cooking. You'll find different words for these things. I've seen wok-fi, kitchenware antennas, pantennas. There are many, many ways. Sometimes they're using USB dongles uh, to put them into these structures that you build um, from, from a dish. So there's many ways of recycling parts to build quite performant antennas.